السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, we apologize for this uh, five or six minutes delay because of the connection between the Zoom. I'm not sure if the Zoom is working or not, uh, unfortunately. But let us proceed because we had the same problem yesterday. We we're trying to make the Arabic uh, talk on that. Today we'll be talking about uh, the youth problems inside Syria. The conflict in Syria is nearly 10 years old. 10 years old. 10 years old, unfortunately. And uh, we are actually facing a lot of humanitarian catastrophe affecting the internally displaced people as well as the refugees outside Syria. They are displaced inside Syria as well as the refugees outside uh, uh, Syria. First of all, I'd like to thank my colleagues who prepared this talk, uh, Mustafa Maad, who prepared uh, and Ahmed Sheikh prepared the data for the talk today, as well as Ali uh, Shawa. Uh, this video, I'm going to play it, but I'm going to play it it's in Arabic, unfortunately. And if we can play it, uh, yes. But I will explain what, what does it mean, what does it say. This is a young boy, Syrian, inside uh, Syria. His job is to collect the plastic bottles, Pepsi, Coke, and others, and all these sort of things, every day. Him and his mother, every day they go to this big rubbish when they throw all these plastic bottles there and after 8 or 10 hours of heavy and hard working he will be paid 3 Turkish Lira 3 Turkish Lira for himself 3 Turkish Lira for his mother this is the income for a family of 4 6 Turkish 6 Turkish Lira, which is nearly one dollar to feed a family, to sustain a family, to protect a family, and to clothe a family, and to shelter a family. This is the problem. And when I was discussing it with some of my colleagues <coughs> from Syria inside and working in the humanitarian field, they said this problem is not affecting Hussein and his family but affecting millions and millions of people inside Syria, unfortunately. And this is the catastrophic reality that Syrian displaced people inside Syria are facing every day. The only dream that this young boy is having is to, have, uh, to buy a bicycle, to buy a bicycle to enable him to go and collect these plastic bottles from these areas. When he was asking what you eat with these three, what, what kind of food you eat every day, he said the three liras, the three Turkish liras, will let us to, enable us to buy a loaf of bread. We have not been able to eat even potato for the last few months. Him and his mother are earning six liras every day. And this is the story of Hussein. And there are many millions of Hussein are inside Syria suffering and nobody is making any any effort to promote them to the outside world or to the mainstream media or to other media unfortunately i thank the young man who was uh, interviewing him who was also another syrian internally displaced refugee uh, and internally displaced individual inside uh, uh, syria as well let us move to the second part of it is the only dream for him is a bike and nobody wants to sell a bike for him he doesn't have the money for it okay now we'll go let us talk about uh, a hard hard statistical data from united nation high commission of refugees and from unicef the total population of Syria is about 18.4 million. This is a report uh, published in January 2020 by UNSR. And uh, the number of Syrian refugees in the world is 5.5561 million, 
which is constituting 30.1% of the actual population of the Syrian uh, country. 3.57 uh, million of them are inside Turkey. That means 19.4% of the Syrian population are living as refugees inside Turkey. Unfortunately, uh, 30% of the Syrian population are living as refugees outside Syria. 19% of the Syrian population are living inside Turkey. If we calculate or add the internally displaced people to the uh, refugees in, in, inside, inside Syria and the refugees outside Syria, they will become more than 11 million people. Yani about 60% 60, 60 plus of the Syrian people are between refugees outside in different countries like Jordan, Lebanon, uh, Turkey, and Egypt, and uh, other countries, as well as inside Syria, is about uh, 60, nearly 60% 60 of the Syrian population are between internal displacement as well as becoming refugees outside Syria. UNICEF in 2019 said the number of people in need are 11.7 million of the 18.4 million. That means that 63%, 63.6% are in need. 63.6% are in need. The number of children amongst them is 5 million. 5 out of 18.4 million, which is 27.12% of the uh, people, the, 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 of, of, the, of the population of Syria. 5 million children are in need. As said also, the number of internally displaced is 33.7%, as you can see the statistics. And the number of internally displaced children children in 10 minutes place inside Syria is 2.6 million. That means 14.3% of the total population of Syria. 2.6 million children are in 10 minutes placed. 6.2 million people are in 10 minutes placed. And this is the reality of the horrific, horrific, horrific statistic that we are facing or the Syrian people are facing at the moment. If we talk about the number of people living in hard to reach, difficult area to reach inside Syria is 1.1 million. That means that 6% nearly of the internally displaced people in Syria in area called hard to reach. Hard to reach, hard to reach. And amongst them, 360,000 children, which is about 0.02% of the total population of the Syrian uh, people, or 32.7% of, uh, of the people who are living in a very hard to reach area, very difficult to reach area. So children are affecting all the life, are affected all the time. This is what UNICEF is saying. On the 10th anniversary of the war or the conflict, or the armed conflict inside Syria. Illiteracy. As the Middle East uh, newspaper, which called it the, the newspaper, or the international newspaper of the Arab uh, or Ummah or Arab nation, which called the Sharq al-Aus in Arabic, said that third of the children of the Syrian are out of school. If I've got eight million, eight million children are a part of the people of Syria, 2.8 million of them are, are, are not going to school at all. If we look at those 2.8 million, if some of them have left Syria at the age of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, by now they could be 11, 15, 17, 18, 20, have not been attending school teaching. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is a this is the reality. When we keep watching a, a horrific, horrific humanitarian disaster happening in the last ten years, and we do little, and we do little, 
and do the rest or we spend the money on different uh, priorities. This is some of the definition given to us by uh, Mustafa Maad about the definition who are the youth. For me, the youth could be a man or a woman at the age of 80 or 70 or 90 having the spirit and the heart and the dynamism of the young people. Not only the age will govern the who is the youth will be, but they could be any of these uh, ages. Or could be 15, 20, 21, 30, whatever you call it. Youth are considered, and Mustafa was saying, youth are considered uh, the men of tomorrow, the women of tomorrow, and the builders of the future. And through their efforts, they build the educational system and the future of the younger generation to come. They are the, the power of youth will be considered one of the most important elements of social change in any society. One of the most important elements of social change in any society. The more sound and good the youth will be, like us, like you, people watching today, the more, the more stronger their society will be. When we empower the young people, they'll be able to build a stronger society. He also said, youth enjoy having a greater enthusiasm, of course, energy, power, dreams, uh, action, and all. A, a, a greater enthusiasm and vitality in their thoughts, action, and this leads to what? Vital direction of the progress and the advancement of the society. Clear, clear, clear role for the young people in their country. Youth have a spirit, have the spirit of what? Of creating entrepreneurship. They are Pioneering, most of pioneering is coming from the young people. Entrepreneurship, the power of competition and creativity and innovation. Yeah, entrepreneurship, competition, creativity and innovation. These are the youth which are ignoring them cross board in most of the Muslim countries, so-called countries, or most of so-called Arab countries. We ignore them. We let them to dance, to sing, and have a very, very trivial dreams without actually, actually letting them to stand up, empower to build their countries, to build their societies, to build the future generation, uh, the, the, uh, the future of the generation to come, inshallah. Still with Mustafa and his thoughts, youth enjoy having the characteristic of curiosity. Curious, oh, I want to do this, I want this. Inquisitive, mostly they are inquisitive. They're asking kind of questions. Why, where, why, where, and why, all these sort of things. It's good. And the mind sharpness, very sharp. Bismillah, mashallah. So when we lose this power and this resource inside our society, we lose a lot. The most important investment and the, most, the highest rewarding investment is when you invest in the side, your society in human resources. In human resources. Youth also enjoy a high degree of dynamism, vitality, flexibility, characterized by the quick response, power of energy, and creativity. See, thank you, Mustafa, for actually animating, making me to be very motivated to talk about your writings to me. And this coming from inside, from inside, from inside Syria. Youth are always the source of giving, giving, oh, giving time, giving energy, giving thoughts, giving ideas, giving dreams, giving everything, giving money as well. Energy, strength, and determination. Youth are considered an important social force. Important social force of what? As a major social sector of society. Yani, um, Social source of what? Of making the change. Change makers. <sighs> Youth are also considered to be an important social force as a major social sector in the society. Winning them as a change makers means winning the battle for the desired social change or societal change. So, youth are those 
those those who can make the social change and societal change this power youth are considered to be a powerful economic force since they can produce what the society needs because they are the labor force they are the thinking force they are the dynamic force and they are they are the motivated motivating force these are some of the characteristics of the youth as mentioned by Mustafa. Let us talk about the problem facing youth inside Syria, especially in the area of displacement among these 6.2 million people inside Syria. First one, unemployment. It goes up, 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 up to 50%. Why there is unemployment? Because we cannot create a stable economy, even informal or formal economy. Why? Because there is no security. Every day there is a missile, there is bombing, there is attacks, there is killing. Nobody will be able to come out to the market to start create something. That's why the unemployment rate is quite high inside uh, Syria in this area which I'm talking about. Emptiness. They don't have anything to think about. Emptiness like void. Void. This kind of void. al uh, farag and this emptiness will lead them to feel a lot of problems and to suffer from the agony of having the time but unable to use the time progressively, positively to help others or to build the society. Poverty. Of course there is poverty. Definitely. Because the people there cannot become productive individuals, cannot be engaged in any kind of proper uh, industry, even primitive industry, even primitive businesses, even primitive agriculture, uh, building primitive agriculture. No, they cannot because of the insecurity, the lack of security, which has been imposed on them inside the country. Uh, lack and loss of self-confidence. They lost confidence in themselves because there's nobody to nurture them, Nobody to guide them, nobody to educate them, nothing, nothing for them. There's no schools running for those, for the many of them, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. That's why uh, look, uh, loss of confidence or lack of confidence coming from inability to do something in spite of the fact that you feel that you can do something for your community. But there's no resources. There's no safety and security. Loss of identity. People moved inside Syria from zone A to zone B to zone C to zone D. And they came to different areas. They become like clusters of people. Not, not, not a, uh, a mosaic of one community. Because they came with different... Uh, uh, understanding from different areas, and they meet together as clusters of people. So they need to build a new settled society and community in where they are nowadays. That's why it is loss of identity. They don't know whether Syria will be one piece, two countries, three countries, four countries, because we know that too many powerful countries are playing something inhumane inside uh, uh, Syria, unfortunately, uh, at the moment. And we don't know if Syria will become one, two, three. We hope, I hope, and I pray for Allah that Syria will stay as one country and the people will be able to decide who should be governing the country in a most democratic way. Uh, so, loss of education and insufficient vocational training. Because as I mentioned, uh, 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 the uh, 2.8 million children are out of school. 30% of the children. No proper schooling, no proper education in universities and institutions and uh, colleges and others. That's why this will lead to ignorance and even not, not enough vocational training program for them because it's left it's left only to the handful or a dozen or 
uh, dozens of uh, humanitarian organizations trying to meet the demand or the huge demand or the incredible demand of this uh, uh, influx of internally displaced people. Uh, there's a big generation gap between the older generation, the grandfathers and mothers, the fathers and the mothers, and the young people and the grandchildren. Big generation gap. The elder generation, when they move out, they moved out having a certain culture, certain values, certain beliefs, fixed beliefs. But the children who came out with them are living in a different culture, different society, having different values, even having sometimes different beliefs, unfortunately. All these problems is affecting the people who stayed in displacement over the last 10 years. Frustration and despair. The conclusion of all these is that the young man or the young woman be, they will be frustrated. Once you become frustrated and you live in this emptiness that you have uh, in, in, inside your society, you start to think stupidly to do something or somebody might pick you up to do something stupid and something horrific. Uh, feeling the loss of sense of, of their well-being. Oh, what? No belongings, no well-being. And becoming more confused. You know why more confused? Because when the Arab Spring started in 11, 2011, everybody was hoping that there be a democratic, democratic social change. Fair and democratic one. But it, it turned into this armed conflict. This one side. Second point is they saw so-called figures, so-called political figures, economical figures, religious figures falling down, become corrupt. And they discovered that they are not what they were thinking about them before this Arab Spring. Unfortunately, the Arab Spring over the last 10 years proved that many of these so-called preachers, uh, uh, stars, uh, thinkers, uh, theologians, and others be, become like uh, a fake story. And this led the, 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 the young people to be conf more confused. You know why? Because... There is no uh, an institution to teach them, actually, to teach them. And they are left to the social media and the likes and the hashtag of those people. So whom do, to whom do they follow? That's why they become more confused and have distorted ideas and shattered. Become confused, shattered, and disoriented and in their thoughts. Of course, there's economic and social problems will become a very fertile, the economic and social problem that they are facing is a very fertile media for rapid growth of violence. Violence against wives, against husbands, against children, against neighborhood, which could be coming extremism, which could be becoming radicalism, and then unfortunately terrorism, and it could be picked up by any group to... Uh, to, what do you call it, to, to, to use them. Uh, the, the another problem, the unacceptable and the expensive marriage. Oh my God, in this very difficult situation, still father and mother of the girls are so stupid, are silly, and think that they are living in a very safe and stable society and the economy is good. And I mentioned it in the Arabic uh, uh, talk yesterday, about the dowry. Once upon a time, Sa'id ibn Musayib was one of the greatest scholars of theology and in Islam. In his uh, lesson, was sitting there and uh, he realized that one of his closest students were absent for the last two, three days. Then he came and when he came, he looked miserable. And he asked him after the, the class, What's wrong with you, my son? He said, I lost my wife. She died uh, two, three days ago. That's why I'm upset. He said, okay, may Allah uh, help you and protect you and so on. So. You know what happened? In the evening, he went and knocked the door of this student. And he said, the, the, the student said, who is at the door? He said, I am Saeed. He said, Saeed who? 
said Saeed ibn Musaid, oh my God, my scholar, my teacher in front of my door. He rushed and opened the door to find him and behind him somebody there. He said, this is my daughter. I bring her to you. She is your wife. And she should not be sleeping uh, a ba uh, bachelor uh, uh, tonight. The man was, oh, what to do? Yani, what to do? He does not have any food, any drink, any clothes, any furniture in the house. He's a very poor man. He went to the roof and called upon the woman in the nearby area. Oh, ladies, aunties, come, 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 come. I'm married. What? Every woman, Bismillah, mashallah, ran and rushed to his house. And his mother came and told him, Sonny, you leave the house for the coming three days and would prepare the house, would put everything in it, and would prepare your wife for you. Don't come back, actually, before three days. This was the scholarly. The scholar, how he realized that marrying his daughter to a good man is for more, far more important than having this huge dowry. Some people say, oh, what, in $4,000, $5,000, $3,000, what, 20, 30 million uh, lira? Who can afford it from young people at that time? This is really wrong. Uh, the wild and, and, and uncalculated desire of immigration. You see, the young people inside Syria now, they you know what, what? We want to immigrate no matter what. Even if we die in the boat. If, we, if the boat is drowning and we drown, it's far more better than living inside in despair and frustration. Even we saw the recent video for this handful or a dozen of women who came in a truck from Syria to Iraq with about 15 or 20 young children three years old, five years old, seven years old, ten years old, and all of them nearly were suffocating. When the Iraqi security forces opened this uh, container, container, 40-foot container, oh my God, the children were nearly dying. But you see, the mothers and the grandmothers and the aunties with the children were just trying to run away from the bigger, horrific prison which is affecting them and the life of the children inside Syria. Let us emigrate to anywhere, even if we die. We don't care. Living in illusion, because people, when you have this uh, emptiness, when you have this big time in, at, the, at the back of your mind, and you keep thinking what to do, what to do, what to do, you keep having a lot of dreams, a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, but there's no means of translating into action points or programs or projects. Start smoking, the, become, uh, taking drugs, and even even start to watch those kind of uh, yani social media channel of pornography as well. Okay, lack of independence. See, in the good old days when we were one society in Syria, there was a hurma, there was a, a respect to the chastity of women young girls and family and the rights of the family and the right of neighborhood nowadays in this kind of complex complicated situation there is no chastity for them you cannot have your privacy in a camp in a tent you don't know who is looking from within the tent or behind the tent you don't know who is listening to you you don't know who's going to talk to your daughter or, 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 or wife when she goes out of the tent or the community center. There's no privacy anymore. There's no privacy anymore. There's no privacy anymore. And the last and not, not least is a syndrome, which I call it syndrome. The refugees and the internal space syndrome. What, what, the, what is this syndrome means? Means that every refugee, every internal displaced, individual, every poor people living in the shanty town, even in a stable country, okay, are locked down by others. Oh my God, they are miserable. If you find a decent husband from those people who come qualified, no, the family will never let him to come and marry their daughter. If you find a decent girl to marry your son, no, they are refugees. They are 
uh, internally displaced people, they are uh, actually poor people from this low area, with shanty town, whatever they call it. This is superiority complex. Against me, I am a refugee or internally displaced. You made me refugee. You made me internally displaced. I wanted to live in my country in peace and dignity. I have my own credibility, but you forced me. You forced me through a war, which I was not a part of it, to become a refugee, to become internally displaced. Actually, and now you are telling me there's a perception, bad perception about refugees and the internally displaced people. And that's why I called it the refugees and the internally displaced people syndrome. Listen to it. The refugees and the internally displaced people syndrome, which is affecting the image and the credibility of the young Syrian people. Now we finished talking about the problems and the root cause of the problem. Now let us talk about the solution. I've got uh, eight or ten points of solution. First of all, I draw this drawing uh, yesterday morning before I started the Arabic uh, uh, lecture yesterday. And you can see the aim is at the top is the young people or the youth. Then we have to have certain path for all the programs we should be creating to help tackling the problems which I mentioned it in the previous uh, slide. Like 17 uh, problems. If, if you make a proper survey to ask the internal displaced people inside Syria how many problems you have, they may be instead of 17, it could be 1700 problems. First step of uh, this solution is this is actually the role of the so called, uh, uh, of the so called uh, uh, civil society organization, humanitarian organization, development organization, and the international organization. First one, drawing a comprehensive field, comprehensive field road maps and the plans to change their current situation, the current situation of the young people into a sustainable reality. Say it again. Drawing a comprehensive field road maps and the plans to change the current situation of the young people into a sustainable reality. This will be through what? Designing suitable programs for all paths that their society will need. Program and path, which I'll put them in between the pillars inside uh, this drawing. Sponsoring and promoting you, young team, young team, many young team, many able young people and old people and women, even children. As we saw the needs of Hussein at the very beginning of the talk. And initiative that provide community service to help them financially, morally, and logistically. For God's sake, stop feeding. Stop doing all the traditional project that we used to do before, but start working on the ability and the, 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 the quality of the individual by training them, by educating them, by guiding them, by empowering them. Number three, prioritizing the investment. I want to invest in those youth, in these societies, in the field of social studies. We, yesterday I was nearly, we, we don't believe in social studies or research. It's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Training programs, capacity building, uh, social studies, uh, research is not on the agenda. It is food, water, drink, medicine, which we need, but I need a portion. I need a portion for research, for advocacy, for training, for capacity building, for young and old people. Prioritizing investment in the field of social studies to empower the young people through the result of it is field studies into uh, to, through changing the results of its field studies into practical program and project and all these studies has become a project and programs bequeathing bequeathing means that i have to give my knowledge to bath my knowledge to transfer my knowledge to mentor the young people my institutional memory here 
if I die today, say inshallah, maybe Allah knows better, I will be sinful. You know why? Because I have a lot of knowledge here. I did not pass it to the generation who needs it. So those people who are living in Ghazi Antab, in Istanbul, or in Rome, or in uh, Paris, or in Antakya, uh, or in Rahaniya and others, have to pass their institutional memory to those young people inside, because they are locked in, in a huge prison, which take about 6.2 million uh, prisoners. <sighs> Bequeathing uh, the institutional, scientific, and practical experience and memories to those young individuals who will be able to carry out the responsibility of building sustainable society. It's not my right. It's not your right to keep the memory, to keep the institutional memory, to keep the knowledge to yourself and myself. Because it has been created at the back of my mind by the community through their suffering. So I have to bring it back to the community, to the generations to come. Protracting the investment in vocational training. If we, don't, if we cannot do this, this, the, 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 the traditional uh, uh, state uh, uh, education, we can go for the vocational training, go for rehabilitation, as well as other non-formal educational schemes and building more development and training centers. We need to build those. It's not only schools. We need training centers. We need everything, very simple things. We need to make, uh, what do you call it, a re 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 uh, society revolution to, not, to try to engage everyone and anyone inside the, 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 this ref in, in stainless place camp to be a part of us. Investing, we need, see, Somebody might say voluntary and voluntarism, it is just people can't find a job. You know what I do? What I will say. Have you seen the video at the very beginning? This was a volunteer. I'll show you the result at the end of the talk, inshallah. There's a lot of initiatives. And some of these initiatives are being created by people who are working in different organizations. So they have to do some voluntary activity and engage other people. With the, with the bigger organizations such as X and Y and Z and E and T and B, they should have a program, training program for volunteers to be a budget, to train volunteers, to give them the skills, the skills and to enable them to become a suitable citizen and effective citizen in the society. Investing in youth livelihood, 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 microfinance, supporting microfinance schemes, small scale projects and initiatives. We have to do this to those big organizations. Please, for God's sake, for God's sake, for God's sake, stop, stop, stop spending most of the money on food. Make it food for thoughts for those young people and empower them. For God's sake, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. Organizing the periodic, periodic youth forum and the open discussion. Now we have the Zoom, we have the Wi-Fi, we have all this. Either from outside to inside, if we cannot go there, or from inside to inside. Do something to raise the social awareness. Young people have to be motivated by you. If you can visit, well and good. If you can't, at least pass the message. For those people who the hashtag scholars and the likes of scholars... Give the time to the young people and give them a practical messages to motivate them and to change them from being uh, frustrated, uh, this in despair, uh, uh, into this kind of motivating, spiritually built, morally uh, moral uh, system, a moral uh, uh, character they have. Organizing Project Young uh, Youth Forum and Open Discussion to raise community awareness, uh, awareness, increase communication, increase communication between different, uh, different youth groups inside as well as supporting and building new youth groups. Number nine, paying attention to social media. I'll give the example. I give the example of this young man 
who uh, made the video at the very beginning and will be seeing another video at the end. I'll leave it so you can, unfortunately, it's in Arabic. It's not in English, but at least I will leave it uh, to you to, to, uh, to watch it or to maybe to ask the organization to make this uh, in translation of it. Encouraging civil society organization to establish as many as community market. This is very important. Why I keep saying community market? Local market, community market. Because, I, because we want to let the economy to move around. If we have 500 families in one area, and the ability of each family is $100 investment, that means that we have $50,000. If we have the market for this $50,000, and this market will enable this kind of uh, money goes around, and the money goes from sector A to sector B to sector C to sector D, it might become at the end of the day the round cycle. The round cycle of the money could be going from 50,000 to 100,000 to 200,000 to 500,000 to a million dollars. It depends how you use it. Actually, as a, 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 as, as a look, as local markets, because there be tea makers, coffee makers, transportation, uh, uh, rate for the rent of the stall, uh, people to buy, people to sell, all these kind of things go from electricity to, يعني, you find that this 50,000 pound will go around two, three, four, five, ten times to become this 200, 300, 400,000 dollar and comes back and create a lot of employment, even low scale employment. <laughs> to start uh, the kickoff, of building a local economy. Building as many as sports and playing fields. As we said, there's much time wasted in void, emptiness, despair. Playing fields, sports. Well, I don't want you to build malls and big things very, very expensive. No, just, just open area for young people to play sports, to run, all kinds of different kinds of stuff. Sports and playing fields, organizing sports events and competition to tackle the youth frustration. Utilize their time and energy prob properly and discover the young and talented sports personalities and athletes. Not only tackling their time, but actually discovering the talent, the most talented people. Look at the history of Messi. Who was he? Look at the history of Pelé, the, 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 the uh, Eusebio, who was actually from uh, Mozambique and was playing in Benefica in, 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 uh, in uh, Europe. Look at the history of even uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, who was he at that time. Those young people, stars and others, got the opportunity to become global athletes, global stars. Make this to discover the most talented, not only for the sports, but actually through the reading rooms, which is number 13, and the, the discussion on, 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 on the communication there, you will discover a talented poet, a talented writer, a talented theologian, a talented uh, historian, a talented uh, uh, author, and all these sorts of things. Start to go around to reshuffle the society bottom up because as I believe that the solution is local innovation is local and sustainability is local these are the 13 points this is I show you the, the video at the very beginning talk about Mustafa Mustafa was the one who was collecting the plastic bottles Visited by this, this, uh, this individual is from a youth initiative. They saw the video and they visited the family of Mustafa and this is what they have done to the family of Mustafa. So the one who made the video was a local IDP, internal space individual, and the one who tackled the situation is an initiative, actually unfortunately in Arabic. This group of young people are volunteers, have got their own initiative. They went to visit Mustafa and his family, and they managed, they managed, sorry, Hussein, not Mustafa, I'm sorry, it's not Mustafa, Hussein, as you can see, the one who created the video, and this new, new, new initiative, he's explaining, 
He came there to sponsor the family. And the first donation came to them, came from a local individual inside this area. That's the father of Mustafa. The name of the donor was Rajil Ali. He said they are going to give them $200 every month as well as building two rooms for them. So the video was local, the initiative is local, and the donor is local. And now you can see the face of Hussein laughing, smiling, and in the previous video, he was nearly crying because he was earning three, three, three lira every day after working for eight or nine hours every day. This is one video. So the video was local, the local donor was local, and the initiative was local. And this is the original video. You know, the one who made this video, I call it uh, uh, the story of agony of uh, Hussein, 3.849849 views in two, two days ago. 3.849849 views two days ago. That means that there's innovation local, there's a response local, there's initiative local. So the people who made the, the story of agony, their video became viewed or been seen by more than nearly 4 million people. And the small initiatives which attended, as you can see, the people was, uh, was local and the, the donor was local as well. And this is a message. This is a message. This is a message. This is a message for any international donor to know that the solution is simple and the innovation is local. And the sustainable solution is local as well. This is the father who talked about uh, the, the donor who gave the $200 monthly for the family as well as building the two rooms. And this is the organization. Actually, we would call this in English, the emergency response team. Young volunteers, they have a job during the day, but they manage, and this is their story, as you can read it, as, because I, I have talked too much, the humanitarian volunteer team. The, uh, uh, the emergency response team, which is a humanitarian group, their message is spreading the spirit of giving, ambition, and the individuality in human volunteering, and vision promoting volunteerism by depending, uh, by deepening it is concepts and providing human values. The story is a humanitarian volunteer team which includes 320 members in their team. Our team arises during the Syrian crisis. We work on crisis management, addressing the most urgent cases. We seek to provide those in need a safe environment in addition to establish a social solidarity fund that guarantees the right of the poor people. Goals promote the principles of volunteering and the community, serve the society and secure it is nutritional, health and educational needs, invest experiences and skills of the youth to serve the afflicted societies, coordination of social responsibility programs to achieve sustainable development society and to provide support uh, to provide support and primary care to the needy groups yani whatever we call it a group you so look at it look at it with me the one who wrote my talk today are two two internally displaced people inside syria as well as another refugee in turkey the one who made the video is an internal displaced. The one who gave the donation is an internal displaced. And the one, the one, the one who uh, makes the initiatives is a team of volunteers made out of 320 people. Invest, invest, invest in them because they can create the solution and the sustainable and suitable solution for their society and for their country. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you all. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa And there's a video at the end as well. I will play it. But unfortunately, it's in Arabic again. 
And uh, so you can contact the organization or the initiatives and uh, they will be actually able to make it in English for you, the emergency response. There's many, 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 many initiatives inside Syria. Many, many, many. Let us to appeal to the big organization to look after such initiatives and to empower the people who create such initiatives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.